Hello guys and gals and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be taking a trip back in time to 2005 and we're going to be covering Lionhead Studios Black and White 2. More specifically, the expansion pack Battle of the Gods. Now this isn't a walkthrough video, it's just me doing a brief overview on a game that I still love to this day. Now this video has been specifically requested by a friend of mine called Godish, so a big thumbs up for Godish. Thank Thank you for requesting this video, as promised, here it is. So for those of you who have the original disc of Black and White and Black and White 2, it is possible to actually play the game on Windows 10. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to view at your leisure, uh, which will teach you how to actually get into the game when running it on Windows 10. The cinematic you're currently viewing on the screen now is the opening cinematic which uh, is more of a teaser than anything else and it just shows you what this game is all about and how epic it actually is. And with that we'll get into the game and I will explain to you what it's all about and the whole storyline behind it. But first I'll explain that you've got two guides, you've got the angel and the devil which are both part of you and they just advise you throughout the whole game, the angel being the good, the devil being the bad. So now we'll watch the opening cinematic for the final level of the expansion pack and oh you can no, just get a feel no. for what those no, entities are all about. So, here's where we really fight. If we lose here, we lose everything. It'll be back to the void for us. This place has seen much death. Everywhere the sweet scent of decay. I feel its power. I grow stronger. I can go anywhere and do anything. I can destroy you. I will raise the bones of your ancestors and send them against you. Now, I tire of this. Watch me wreak my vengeance. Be ready, leader. He's charging a hurricane. So there you have it. The basic premise of this expansion pack is that you are against an evil god who raises undead armies and sends them all against you. He comes into the game at the start and he has taken over your homeland and is taking over the world and you have to come in and stop him. You've got two choices, you can do it the good way or you can do it the bad way. So you can either be a benevolent being and be kind and gentle to all your people and keep them happy, or you can torture the crap out of them and keep them miserable, send them off to war, and all that jazz. Naturally, me being me, I'm always the nice benevolent god, purely because I find it a little bit easier to be nice to people and just convert all of the other towns by impressing them, and to impress other towns, You've just got to build up your town and make it look really nice and impressive. Once it reaches a certain level of impressiveness, the other towns will basically leave their area and they will come and join your settlement. The other way you can do it is the evil way, which is basically build up an army and then send them to go and take over the towns by force. Once you have taken a town by force, you own that area. So you can do it a little bit of both ways, you can impress them enough to make them leave and then send an army in to take the empty settlement and start moving people back in and building and building and building. You have a green influence ring which you cannot really extend out of so that's always quite tricky but the more you build and the more people you have in your settlement the larger that ring gets. So you've got two ways of defending your settlements, you, can, you have your beast and you have miracles as well as epic miracles. Your beast is basically a character that you control by having its leash 
and you can put it into certain stances. Most of the time I just leave it in free will and let it do what the hell it likes. But you can send it against enemy platoons uh, to stomp all over them. And you teach that creature what to do, kind of like a Tamagotchi. You teach it what to do and um, how to react with the world around it. So for example, it can pick up a tree and it'll be like, well, what do you want me to do with it? And you can tell him to weight lift with it or put it down and water the tree and you can teach him where to poop because that's the thing. But mainly what you will do with your creature is send him against the enemy creature because they are pretty OP. Other ways of handling uh, enemies that are coming at you is to use miracles, which you need a shrine for. You grab some of your people by picking them up, uh, you can grab many people, and you drop them on the shrine to make them disciple worshippers. They will then build up some mana for you, and from that mana you can then use miracles like the lightning miracle to just smite everybody dead. It's fabulous. Throughout this level, the enemy god will constantly bombard you with miracles of his own, which is a complete pain in the ass when you want to build up quickly because you have to keep using a shield miracle to protect your settlement, otherwise it just burns to the ground. At the beginning of the level, the enemy is given two shrines. These are basically used for epic miracles, which as a player, you need to charge. As an enemy, apparently you just get a surplus amount of mana for it and can just use it however you bloody well want, which is a bit of a cheat but there we go so from the start he's charging a tornado miracle which he will use if you don't do something about it the easiest thing to do is to grab yourself a fireball miracle and just throw it at the shrine until you hit it and then it will just start burning which means it cannot be used the other one he's got is actually inside his main fortress which is a bit harder to get to but there is a little cheat that you can use to actually get to it and it's not like one of these inputs a code and you can get to it it's much more simple than that which I'll show you in a bit so basically the premise of the game is world domination either through being good or being bad your hand or your little cursor icon will change depending on whether you're good or bad and everything in between. You can be ultimate good or you can be ultimate bad or you can be smack bang in the middle. The best part is your creature has its own good v bad levels. So you can be an absolutely wonderfully benevolent god but your creature can be the most sinister fucked up thing you've ever seen in your life. So you can mix it up a bit. But the overall premise is to basically capture each of the settlements in turn until you have all of them on the map and have vanquished the enemy evil god. In the original campaign of Black and White 2, there are only a handful of levels to play, and in the expansion there are even less. There are four levels, one of which being a cinematic nothing more. But each of these levels can take a considerable amount of time to actually complete. What you will tend to do is complete the game and then go back and complete it all over again until you have enough tribute to buy all of the buildings that are available to buy so you can place them and become impressive a lot quicker. Doing this level with everything unlocked actually took me an hour and 45 minutes, which I've condensed down into a nice little video for you. You're welcome. On your screen right now you are seeing the result of not taking out the enemy's epic earthquake miracle. As a result he casts it on a nearby town. Thankfully it wasn't my town <laughs> that he actually attacked and it was just an empty town so that was a relief. So this is the cinematic you get but I did promise you at the start of the video that I'd tell you how to prevent this from happening. So here it is. First of all you've got to locate yourself a nice healthy tree if you haven't got one of those use the water miracle on a tree and make it grow very very big then after a few seconds drop a fireball miracle on it and start burning it grab that burning tree and then move over to the enemy settlement and just hover that tree over any building that you so desire to be burnt namely their epic miracle as you can see the miracle is now being burnt and destroyed. I don't think this was an intended mechanic for the game when the game creators made it, but it works, so I'm quite happy with that. 
But to gain tribute, you will need to complete various different tasks within each of the levels. Some things are hidden, some things are not. They usually depicted by a silver scroll, which means you can click on it and then do whatever it is your conscience are telling you to do. Normally there is a good way and a bad way to do it, or some of them are just puzzles that you have to kind of figure out. Unfortunately, the last level only has one, which doesn't really bear much importance, because all it does is stun the enemy creature and that is it. But if you ever do get a chance to play this game in its entirety, I will pre-warn you that a lot of the voice acting and a lot of the quests are corny as hell, which for me just adds to all the entertainment of the actual game itself. It is very British and it is very tongue-in-cheek. So that's it, build up your town, impress everybody, take over the world. Simple as. Now the beauty about this game is it is currently on Amazon for around about £10. So that is pretty damn sexy. The downside however is that this is probably the last in the line of black and white games. On the 29th of April 2016 Lionhead Studios was officially closed down. If you ever get a chance to read up about Lionhead Studios on the Wikipedia, it's an interesting read. They're uh, responsible for such wonders as the Fable series. And some of you may recognise the name Peter Molyneux, who used to work for Bullfrog, who created the original Dungeon Keeper games, which you all know I'm a big fan of. So, in theory, I'm a big fan of Peter Molyneux's work. It's a crying shame that Lionhead Studios had to shut down and unfortunately it doesn't look like EA Games are very interested in making any more black and white games. And more than anything, their interest was in the Fable series. But who knows what the future may bring. And speaking of the future, if you'd like to see me go through each and every one of the levels for Black and White and Black and White 2, including the expansion, I'm going to aim to get this video 200 thumbs up. If it gets 200 thumbs up, I will go back and I will do a video on each and every level of Black and White and Black and White 2 for you. If not, then I won't. So I leave this choice in your hands. But that is all from me for today. Thanks very much for watching this video. I love you all with affections unspeakable. Goodbye.